Hello Scorpio, welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Scorpio is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Remember to hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. If there is anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Scorpio, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. All right, we've got a knight of swords coming in. This is very, um, very quick kind of decisions being made. This is something that I think is, um, I feel like you're right on the edge, right? You're very alert for some reason, that, that there's something building up. I think you can sense that something's coming, okay? You can sense that there is, there's just like an electricity in the air. It's almost like you can hear the flapping of the wings, but you're not sure where it's coming from, or you don't quite see it yet, but you know it's coming, okay? So I feel like you're very alert for something. We're going to put this into some context, okay? Um, it could be a Libra energy, perhaps, in your life as well. We've got now the Six of Swords, Four of Pentacles, the Hierophant, uh, Seven of Swords, and a Princess of Cups over here on the Path of the Serpent, a Princess of Pentacles, very nice. Three of Wands, another Princess, this time a Princess of Swords. A lot of Swords cards now. And we're ending now with a Two of Swords. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of Swords in your reading today. We're gonna select the Mystery Card, Bonus Card, Confirmation Card. This is a random card from the Smith Wake Tarot. This is the Factor Infinite and Unknown. We're going to set it down over here and put Kevin, a.k.a. Mr. Bates, right there on top. Now, we're not going to look at that card until the very end, but it will tie everything together and it will give us the confirmation that we need. If you have a prediction for that card, put it in the comments. Um, let's practice our intuition. All right. Let's take a look around the room here. Um, the first and only major arcana card we have is the Hierophant. Okay. And to me, the Hierophant is kind of um, the feeling as if you've achieved a certain level of success in your life. It's kind of like you've done all the work. You've, you've graduated the course. You know, you've studied, you have the diploma, and now it's just kind of like we're ready for what's coming. You know, that you've, you've done the work uh, up till this point. There's nothing more that you can learn from the, the textbook. It's kind of like we've, we've graduated. We, I've studied the book. I know the book inside out. You're ready to jump into the real world and, and get that experience, you know? So with a Hierophant in the background, I do feel like you've achieved something already. You've achieved a degree of, of mastery or a degree of, let's say, proficiency. Okay. And now I think the rest of it is... Uh, Let's, let's see what we can make of all of this kind of knowledge or wisdom that you've gained. Let's put it into, into practice. All right. We've got our one major arcana card. We've got one bit of fire here. We've got um, literally one bit of water. We've got a lot of air energy. A lot of thoughts, a lot of communication, a lot of interpersonal relationships, a lot of planning. Okay. And I think that with all the planning, there comes a, a time now to execute. Okay. Um, and we've got our earth energy down here, even the Taurus. Uh, the Taurus energy here with the Hierophant is some earth energy. Okay. So, yeah, I'm really feeling um, there's a need now to take your plans and put them into action. See, we don't have a lot of action cards, but we do have the Three of, of Wands, which is, I think is very good, especially in the environment. Let's talk about the, let's talk about the Six of Swords. This is harmony, 
This is effective communication. This is like creating the right networks. You know, this is structuring the mind in a very organized way. This is planning something out. Um, I feel as if I feel as if all of your training. I feel like with the hierophant back here that you've you've trained for something. You've studied something. You know the information. This is that information, beautifully organized in your mind. Perfect, right? Sometimes we expect life to really be exactly like the book. Sometimes we expect the territory to look exactly like the map looks. This is the map. This is the blueprint of your reality, okay? What we get in practice is something very different, okay? So to me, it does feel as if you have recently completed some sort of education, some sort of a, a download, right? You have the information, you have the blueprint, and now it's a matter of kind of following the blueprint, following the map, and adapting to what is going to be a very, very different experience, okay? Down beneath everything, we see a good foundation with the Four of Pentacles. I think you're somebody who is, a, you're, you're very practical, you're very prepared. I almost wonder if you're, um, in some ways, you're like one of these outdoors person, like a, a survival kind of person, like um, bushcraft kind of stuff, like you know how to make a fire, you know how to make a shelter, you know, uh, you know how to find water, maybe you know how to find food. Um, I feel like you're, you're, you could just kind of go out into the woods and you could survive, you know, you could be, you could be good. Um, kind of reminds me of that, that show alone. You ever watch that? I forget what channel it's on. Uh, you can see clips of it here on YouTube though. And it's just, you know, people who are sort of expert survivalists and they go out into the woods all by themselves. They get kind of dumped off somewhere and, um, they have a few items with them and they've got to make a shelter, they've got to find water, they got to make, make a fire, they got to find some food, they got to survive. Whoever lasts the longest before kind of radioing in for help wins the money, right? Um, I feel like you'd be good on some kind of show like that. Or I feel like you believe you would be good on a show like that. Because I feel, again, that you've got the training, you've got the expertise, and maybe you've got the practice and all that stuff. Um, but being out there and really doing it, I think, is a whole, a whole different story. Okay? Um, it's kind of, uh, for instance, it's one of these, um, one of these, these things, like if you're, you're watching a game show, let's say, you know? And when we're sitting at home, we're getting all the answers right. You know, we feel like, how, how am I doing so well? And these people out on the game show actually are doing very well, you know? Um, when we're sitting in the classroom or we're sitting in the comfortable place or we're sitting at home and we're kind of watching something uh, when we're removed from it, something abstractly, you know, kind of um, we're detached from it and we're watching it. It's, we're, we're a lot more relaxed now. It doesn't always work that way in school. I wasn't really like that in school. I was always very nervous in school. Um, but when we're sitting at home watching something else happen, it's very easy to, to think of the right answers. But when you're in that emotion, when you're in that sort of um, that uh, intensity and that anxiety, it's not as easy to get the answer. Like when you're really in it, there's a good chance that we're not going to think of the right answers either, right? Um, that's kind of the, the blockage that we see here with this Seven of Swords. We've got the training. We know how to do it when we're kind of sitting here thinking about it or, you know, going through the, uh, the textbook or whatever or, or watching it on TV and we're kind of shouting out the answers. But when we're really in the middle of it and we've got those intense emotions, Princess of Cups here, uh, it, it doesn't really foster the clear thinking. Okay, sometimes it's when we're on the spot and those emotions get hit and get activated, um, it's, it's more difficult, more challenging for us to find the right answer. This is you trying to find the right answer, that central sword, when there's all these other things going on, you know, when there's that intensity of, you know, the lights and the audience and, uh, knowing that you're on TV and everybody's watching you and, um, 
you know, there's a lot more going on. It's not as easy to, to the, the right answer doesn't always come to you, right? And I think you're, I think you're realizing that. I think that you, you're, you're here with this, um, in the, the middle energy, the, the first card we came up with, was the Knight of Swords, right? I feel like you're ready for the, you know it's going to be challenging. You know that it's going to be something that challenges the plan. You know, you know that it's going to be um, intense and spontaneous and variable, and it's going to be very, very kind of wild, right? And unpredictable. And I think that's what we're here. You know that you have all this training. You know that you're good at all this stuff. You know that you know the answers. And now we're just here anticipating the chaos. You know, we're anticipating the um, the kind of uh, the emotional reaction that we'll have. We're anticipating the kind of um, the chaotic thoughts, even right. That for whatever reason, when we're in that adrenaline-fueled moment, we can't really think clearly, you know? I think you're ready for all of that, okay? I think that you're involved with something or you've trained for something, you're ready for something now that you know is going to be the biggest challenge of your life, but uh, it is kind of your dream to do this. Maybe you're going on the game show. Maybe you're going to that kind of survival uh, competition or whatever. Um, this is something that I think you've always dreamed of doing, that you've always wanted to do. Now I feel like you have the training, you've, you've graduated something, right? Or you've achieved some kind of a level of proficiency. Now you get to live the dream. Now you get to actually go and do this. You're very aware of how challenging it is, okay? Now we're gonna move over to the path of the serpent. As we do this, I would like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. And it really does help the channel, and I really do appreciate that. Our first card on the path of the serpent happens to be the Princess of Pentacles. You know that this is really opening up the, the, the floodgates of abundance for you. Okay? This is something that um, it is a dream that you're finally kind of living. And you know that it really is going to change your life. There's such potential for abundance here. Right? Uh, I think physical, financial, um, you're really like, you're doing something really, really big, you know? And maybe it's as, as simple as you, you've uh, gone to school or university, you've, you've gotten the degree or the certificate or the training, and now you get to go do it in real life. And that's where the fun really begins, right? That's where the challenge really begins. Uh, but that's where sort of the rest of your life really begins. Okay, and all and the potential here because it's kind of like maybe school's really easy for you. Maybe now comes the real challenge, the real hard part, and you know that your performance here is kind of directly correlated with how much kind of you know uh, compensation you get, how much return you get from this. Okay, um, your efforts here are directly tied into how much you get out of this situation. And there's really no limit. The more you put into it, the, the more you can grow this. It really is, I mean, if you maximize, if you optimize this opportunity, you're, you could really set yourself up for life here. Okay, this is something really, really big, or it has the potential to be, okay? Um, the three of the three of wands in the environment. It's, it's necessary that you believe in yourself. This, for one thing, it's whatever you're doing, this is something that you identify with. It's, it feels like this is kind of who you are. I feel like this is something you've always wanted to do. Um, you, maybe you, you even knew when you were a kid that this was it, okay? You have to believe in yourself. Every fiber of your being is, is telling you to go and do it and be be ready and to engage with this and to adapt to the situation and to trust in yourself right you've got to have the confidence now the three of wands is about knowing yourself knowing your strengths and your weaknesses though okay knowing kind of um what you're really really good at and 
what things you may need to work on. Now that's what we see with the next card too, being the Princess of Swords. There's gonna be um, there's gonna be a lot of changes to your plans here, right? A lot of what you thought you knew is gonna go right out the window. So the Princess of Swords is kind of saying that the difficulty is for you to sort of forget the textbook and learn uh, kind of in the field, learn like, you know, on the job kind of training. And um, for me, it really, it reminds me of when I was an EMT. I was, I was a, an EMT for a short period of time in California. And I did very, very well in school. I learned all the skills. I knew all the information. But then when you get out there in the real world, they ba the, basically the first thing they tell you is whatever you learned in school, forget it. Whatever you, th you read in the textbook, it's, it's BS. I almost cursed. Uh, it's nonsense. Don't even, it's nothing. Don't forget it, right? They all, um, in the specific situation, every, every organization, every company kind of does things their own way, you know? Um, there are the basic skills, obviously, of four of, you know, the four of pentacles, the kind of, the, the very basic things. But beyond that, Whatever you thought this was going to be, forget it. Because you have to keep your eyes and your ears open and you have to take in this new information and you have to learn how things really go out here. You know, And I feel like that's the situation for you. So it feels like you're kind of doing the same thing, going from the training to now the real, the real practice of it. Okay, And you've got to be open to things that are going to challenge what you thought you knew about it. The things that you learned right? You're going to experience situations that will challenge that. And it's going to be hard for you to say, or to kind of, to not say, well, yeah, but in school, we learned it this other way. They don't care. This is how it's done in the real world, okay? And we see the two of swords um, coming next. And I think that the two of swords is a card that really does advise you to trust your intuition, Okay, it's not about the debate. It's not about kind of yes or no. It's not about the, the logical, rational calculations or the discussion of things. It's kind of saying um, you need to not, not rely on your, your intellect so much, not rely on your learning so much. That this is something that requires intuition. Okay. Because the Two of Swords has this little crescent moon at the top. And it, it's kind of saying the only way to really uh, progress in this situation, to maximize the abundance that really is potential here, is to, is to get, out the, get out of this black and white thinking. To get away from the kind of um, the logical calculations and to trust, to trust your intuition. We're still relying on the training. You still have your foundational skills or whatever they are. Um, but there's, a, there's the, the more subtle guide there, you know? There's something beyond that that really is going to make you something extra special here. Okay? Um, it kind of separates the good from the great, right? is that sort of unknown, intuitive way of perceiving things. And not always kind of going back to what the textbook taught us, but um, learning to tap into that, that higher perception. All right, let's look at the mystery card. I wanna see if there is some indication of what this is or a confirmation of the, uh, the results of what you're doing now whatever this situation is for you. And it feels like it's something at work or school. It feels like it's some kind of a, maybe a career choice or, um, you know, just a, a life path that really is beginning now. You know, that you've been preparing for it. Now it's really time to get out there and do it. So what could this be? Um, maybe a nine or a 10 of pentacles, nine or a 10 of cups. Um, Maybe the death card, your Scorpio power card, could be. It could be an ace of something. Let's see what we have. Uh, ten of cups. Uh, this really is that abundance. This is the absolute fulfillment of this thing. This, I mean, 
this is a really good sign. Um, and I think you're going to be really successful and really happy doing what you're doing here, adapting, uh, leaning into it, um, using your intuition, developing your skills as you go, always being open to learning new things, trusting in yourself, though, having the confidence that you can do this, knowing kind of knowing to expect the chaos, being ready for the chaos, you know, it's going to lead to a lot of fulfillment and a lot of happiness, all 10 cups. Okay, so I, I think you really are on the right track. And I think with that Knight of Swords, you understand what's coming. You understand what to expect here. You know it's not going to be perfectly easy, right? But it is perfectly worth it. This is very, very good. Now, we're going to do an extended reading. If you want to stick around, there's a link up top. There's one down below. New readings for Scorpio on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Be sure to watch both readings. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you want to leave me a comment, let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.